He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample underfoot, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Save us, O Lord, our God, and gather us from among the heathen to give thanks unto your holy name and to triumph in your praise. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. Let all the people say, Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Well, thank you for coming back to another teaching installment of When the Temple in Heaven is Open. Everything will change. And there's so much going on, as you know. There's so much going on because we're at the end of the rope. They continue to tighten it. And soon that rope is going to snap. And when that rope snaps, it's going to snap a lot of people's necks. Because they've been caught in that noose. They've been caught in that trap. They don't even know that the rope's around their neck because they're so blind. Blind leading the blind. And the Bible says if that happens, both are going to fall into the ditch. That's what God said. <laughs> and so you see these folks out here, you know, driving with the mask on all by themselves in their cars. You see them out here glued to the television screen, being programmed by the frequency of the darkness that rules in the powers of the heavens because he's the little g god of this world and so he's telling the vision and everybody who has that rope around their neck don't even know it is falling right into line until the big shebang <laughs> you see because the big shebang is about to happen when it happens we know the time and the season <laughs> and the time and the season is right because we're still in the harvest season, hallelujah. We're still in the harvest season. And so, you know, uh, I'm watching and praying always so that I can be accounted worthy to escape all the things that are about to come on the earth and stand before the Son of Man. That's why we read Psalm 106, 47 through 48, where the psalmist cries out to God to save. Save us, Yeshua, salvation. Save us, O Lord our God and gather us from among the heathen to give thanks unto your holy name and to triumph in your praise. You see, <laughs> the heathen is all around us, my friends. And right now, because they're still light, they can't do what they want to do. You see, but as you see, the proverbial rope around the neck is getting tighter. And a lot of people's screws is starting to come on loose. As you see with all these demonstrations and all these protests, you know, about all these lockdown measures and these COVID passports, you know, the certificates of vaccinations, identifications, artificial intelligence, you know, people ain't having it, you know, <laughs> I'm not having it. But me personally, I'm not going to, uh, you know, go out there and protest. I'm going to go out there and preach Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what I'm going to do because <laughs> you can't stop what's coming. 
we have to go according to what God has already said. <laughs> it's already written. This is the script that's playing out right before our eyes. And we are so blessed to be able to be a part of God's history. To be a part of God's story. You know, his story that he has already told us from the beginning. The end. And this ties into this whole teaching that I want to get into because of everything that's happening with Babylon the Great. As I was studying Revelation chapter 18, I noticed how God showed Babylon's end and he retraces Babylon's end to its beginning. And we're going to see this in two different parts in Revelation chapter 18. And it just blew my mind because the end is playing out right now before us as we see with this big news out of China okay remember this big news out of China over the weekend um, and it's been going on for the last couple of weeks this uh, developer Evergrande is on the brink of default and so if this happens whenever this rug pull comes when they crash the market which is also what Revelation 18 talks about when, when this market comes crashing down which could happen with this Evergrande thing if it pops off tomorrow. Well, who knows? <laughs> That's why we have to walk by faith and not by sight. But uh, this is just another domino that's telling us that this fiat system that this world is under is nothing but a charade. <laughs> it's all a sham. The stock market, all of it. You know, it's all manipulated. You know, they, they bust a couple average Joes and a couple uh, lazy Susies. You know, for insider trading, you know, and they make a, a big stink about it because, yeah, it's illegal and they should. But as we know, the people who pull the strings, uh, the Fed, you know, and we know the powers of darkness behind that, you know, they call the shots because this is the fallen world. That's why God talks so much about, you know, unjust weights <laughs> in the Bible, especially in the book of Proverbs. He despises it. Okay. He he despises unjust weights. Okay. He despises interest. <laughs> he despises greed. Okay. Greedy for gain. Okay. He, he despises the love of money because it's the root of all evil. And we're seeing this root of all evil about to spring up. Okay. And it's going to spring up into a, a fiery flying serpent. Okay. That dragon. Okay. He's the. He's a sauce. Okay, that dragon, he's a sauce. He's about to come down. Okay. He he gonna wreck a little bit of havoc. But I ain't trying to see that clown. Okay. Bible tells me I got power over all the powers of darkness. Jesus Christ lives in me. Christ is in me. The hope of glory. The Holy Spirit. Okay. God is in me. Hallelujah. Just like he's in you. The same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in all born again believers. That's what God said. OK, that's why he said you have to be born again. You got to have the spirit of God. You got to have the Holy Spirit, the seven spirits of God, the menorah lamp, because when everything shakes on the cloudy and dark day, when that darkness comes down, well, when that darkness comes down and darkness is under your feet, it's going to be a whole lot of trouble. You see, that's why, as we read in Psalm 91, God says he is going to to keep us in all of our ways because he's going to give his angels charge over us. God promised that no evil shall befall us, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. The Bible tells us, and we're going to get into it in Revelation chapter 18, that the plagues of Babylon, Babylon the Great, all of her plagues come in one day. Okay, verse 8, Revelation chapter 18. Therefore, her plagues will come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she will be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judges her. So, I cling to the promises of God. Psalm 91, verse 10, tells us that no evil shall befall us, nor shall any plague, any plague, any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Okay, this is the rapture right here. This is the rapture right here. 
This is a rapture verse. And this is a verse that the enemy quoted to our Lord and Savior. He quoted verse 11 when he told Jesus to jump down, you know, uh, jump down from the top of the pinnacle. And uh, he quoted this. He quoted this to the Savior. <laughs> he quoted this to God manifested in the flesh. But it's interesting how he didn't quote the next verse. <laughs> Because he didn't want to say that. <laughs> you know that old serpent. He didn't want to say uh, the next verse. Okay. He didn't want to say the next verse. Uh, verse 13. Okay. You know that serpent. What about to say that? Okay. Because the verse 13 says this. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Rapture. Darkness. Under your feet. Hallelujah. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you're part of the body of Christ. Darkness is going to be under your feet on the day when the angels come to get us. When he sends out the reapers, when he has the sickle in his hand. OK, when that temple door in heaven is open and the ark of his covenant is seen on that day when the reapers go out. When he gives his angels a charge, go get my saints, go get the body of Christ. Dead in Christ, rise first. Those of us who are alive and remain raptured in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And he's going to give his angels a charge over us that day to keep us in all our ways. They're going to bear us up in their hands lest we dash our foot against the stone. Okay, we're not going to be hurt on the cloudy and dark day. Okay, and then verse 13 tells us that darkness is going to be under our feet. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample underfoot. Hallelujah. Darkness under our feet. Verse 14, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. Rapture. He escaped. Hallelujah. I will set him on high because he has known my name. We're going to the land very far off. Okay. We're going to the father's house, my friends. Okay, that place that Jesus Christ promised us, that he went to go to prepare a place for us. And he said that if he goes, he will come again. And you know, our daddy, he can't lie. Okay, you know, God can't lie. Jesus Christ said, I and the father are one. If you have seen me, you have seen the father. Our daddy, he cannot lie. God is one eternally existing. That's three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All one, all Ehad. Okay, no division <laughs> in the Godhead, hallelujah. And so we know that our daddy, he can't lie. So if he said that he's going to go to prepare a place for us, he's going to come again and he's going to receive us to himself so that where he is, there we will be too. You see, he's going to save us my friends, from what's coming. You see, because what's coming is not pretty. And because China's just one piece of the puzzle, <laughs> okay? China's just one piece of this puzzle, which is going to be on the headline news tomorrow where it happens with this Evergrande on the brink of default. But And that's just one little problem with China, but it's, it's about to be a big problem if they default. <laughs> but there's also a whole lot of other problems with China, specifically Taiwan, and also America's debt. You see, because America is also and has been, uh, you know, always raising the debt ceiling. So they got another bill coming up that President Biden said has to be passed or else, you know, the United States is going to default, you know, and that's supposed to be coming up in October. So it's all coming unglued. <laughs> this all has to happen. OK, and we know that when, you know, stuff like these finances start to get shaky, well, that's going to give people uh, who have the power and the and the, um, the button to say, hey, you know what? We're about sick of Babylon the Great. Just press the button. Get it over with. Okay? 500 million. You see what we put there? Uh, Georgia on them guide stones. We got to get it down. Now's the time. You know why? <laughs> because the restrainer is going to be removed at that same time. Hallelujah. But let me get to this other problem with France. Okay, this was also headline news. Okay, last week. You know, France was angry over the backstab of the United States and the UK over their deal with Australia with these nuclear powered submarines. And so Emmanuel Macron, here we go again, 
Okay, ain't no telling who that guy is. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know. I ain't trying to stick around to see it. Okay, I ain't trying to see it. Nope, nope, nope. I ain't trying to see it. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Wherever you want to be Emmanuel Macron, you go ahead, you do it. Okay. <laughs> you do it. Okay, if you ain't in the Father's house on a dark and cloudy day, well, <laughs> oh, night night goat. <laughs> okay, night night goat. You see, but God is, uh, he's able to, to save unto the uttermost those who come to him by faith. You see, no matter what we've done, what we said, what we thought, uh, we could come to Jesus. That's what the Proverbs said. You know, uh, what did he say in the Proverbs? He said, what's better? A living dog or a dead lion? What's better? What's better, a living dog or a dead lion? Okay. As long as you're alive, there's hope. As long as the breath of life is in you, there's hope. Okay. If you're a living dog, well, there's still hope for you. Okay. But you got to come to Jesus. And you got to eat those crumbs <laughs> from the master's table. Hallelujah. You got to humble yourself. You, know? you got to humble yourself and eat them crumbs. Okay. The bread of life. Okay, you got to eat the bread of life. He's going to drop them. Okay, he's a sower. A sower goes forth to sow. He's going to drop them breadcrumbs. Okay, but you, if you're a dog, a Gentile, you know, you got to come and eat them breadcrumbs. Okay, you got to come and eat them breadcrumbs. Hallelujah. And guess what? Them breadcrumbs is good. For his body is meat indeed. Hallelujah. <laughs> and his blood is drink indeed. Hallelujah. You see, but you got to come. But people don't want to come. They want to be a dog. They want to return to their vomit. <laughs> Instead of going to get the breadcrumbs, they want to go back to their vomit. You see? And instead of becoming a new creation, when they eat them breadcrumbs, they go from a dog to a sheep. Okay. New creation. There you go. Hallelujah. Happened to me. Okay. When I say, you know what? I'm sick of this vomit. Sick of it. Save me. Holy Spirit, save me, King Jesus. Save me, Father God, if there's really a God. When I called out in 2006, when I was high off cocaine, out of my mind, servant of the enemy, my goodness, didn't even know it, didn't even realize my depravity. But at that moment in time when God met me, on the day of my visitation, when them seeds finally sprouted, because remember, a soul went forth to sow. Hallelujah. And my parents trained me up in the way that I should go so that when I got old, that moment in time, when Jesus came to visit me, I would not depart. Okay. I want to go back to the vomit. Hallelujah. Because it was already written. My goodness, God is good. <laughs> Predestined before the foundations of the world. That's why I cried out. I cried out. I didn't have nowhere else to, to turn to. <laughs> I didn't try everything in the book. You know, mostly everything. And guess what? It was all vomit. My goodness, nothing but vomit. <laughs> nothing but vomit. My goodness. You know, that nasty vomit, too. Ooh, that nasty vomit. That's all it was. Nothing but vomit. I say, you know what? If there truly is a God, and there he is, hallelujah, <laughs> please save me from this vomit. And that's when I ate the breadcrumbs, hallelujah. Because he met me in a real way, born again, changed my life, took away the taste of cocaine out of my soul instantaneously. My goodness, what a savior we have in Jesus. I ain't touched it since 2006. So help me God. Hallelujah. You see, and I'm pretty sure and not pretty sure I know if you're a born again believer, you also have a testimony that's awesome <laughs> of what God did to you because a sower went forth to sow <laughs> and that's jesus christ you see but there's going to come a point okay there's going to come a point uh when that sower goes forth to sow <laughs> and he gonna come by looking for some fruit okay <laughs> he gonna come by looking for some fruit now now you know child of god that our god <laughs> he gonna come by he gonna look for some fruit now you see because here we see something interesting this all this stuff going on, this is just uh, something that I saw because it's all right on time. Four years ago, in 2017, they had the Las Vegas shooting. Remember that? The worst mass shooting in United States history taking place at the 
quote unquote harvest festival in quote unquote sin city and there on the mandalay bay uh hotel property you had this guy stephen paddock who started shooting from his hotel room on the 32nd floor he was shooting down on the 32nd floor he was shooting down <laughs> okay a rain of bullets you know a rain of bullets and people were caught in an evil snare they didn't even know it <laughs> they didn't even know it they didn't know what hit him you see that's what happens when you get caught in that evil snare when it comes suddenly upon you <laughs> you see no one knows when that day will come you know but on that day in 2017 october 1st it came for 60 people and those 60 people were taken out where they went hey i pray i pray i pray they, i pray all of them went to heaven but hey i don't know but needless to say this event was a foreshadow okay this this event is a foreshadow of the ultimate destruction of babylon the great okay because at the next level the 33rd <laughs> you see this happened on the 32nd level right <laughs> this happened on the 32nd level so you know the powers of darkness when that 33rd level comes well it's night night one third of the fallen angels cast down three three 33rd okay that's the next step that's the next step that's why this happened on the 32nd level okay but when the real shebang happens on that 33rd level <laughs> Okay, on that 33rd level, when you got to go up, <laughs> hallelujah, okay, when you got to go up, up, they coming down, okay, and it's not just them fallen angels, but my goodness, it's them fallen angels, but it's also God himself coming down upon the clouds, hallelujah, <laughs> darkness under his feet, hallelujah, and on that day, he's going to give a shout at the time of the harvest, and he's going to harvest everybody who's a sheep out of sin city, okay. And that's a metaphor for the whole world, okay? Because this whole world is filled with sin. But on that day, all those who have the light, the Holy Spirit in them, we're going to be taken out, okay? And so I said all that to say this because this happened four years ago. So remember, this is all tying in to Jesus Christ as a sower going forth to sow, and then he's going to come looking for fruit. Well, we see this a parable in Luke chapter 13, the parable of the barren fig tree. Now look what God says here, verse Six, he also spoke this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. Then he said to the keeper of his vineyard, Look, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why does it cumbereth the ground? But he answered and said to him, Sir, let it alone this year also, until I dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, well. But if not, after that, you can cut it down. <laughs> and so it's interesting that in the fourth year, when that door opens, okay, there's a conversation. Okay. Four years later, okay, there was three years that had passed, no fruit. And so in the fourth year, when the door opens, <laughs> In the fourth year, when that door opens, there's going to be a conversation. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that conversation is going to be about the fig tree, Israel. Okay. Because when that door opens, all of the focus returns to Israel. You see, but on this day when this door opens, God, he's going to come looking for fruit in that fourth year. In that fourth year, there's going to be a harvest, and he's going to be looking for some fruit. And especially, he's going to be looking for some fruit from the fig tree, okay, Israel. And he's about had it with Israel, but he can't break his promises, hallelujah, okay. But his wrath is going to be kindled, okay. <laughs> his wrath is going to be kindled against Israel, but he's not going to destroy them all. Nope, he's a good God, hallelujah. There's going to be a remnant saved according to the election of grace, hallelujah. You see, but on the fourth, uh, on the fourth year, okay, when God has this conversation in the Godhead, okay, uh, when that voice from heaven speaks, when that door opens, the number four, when that door opens, there's a conversation, <laughs> okay, well, what are we going to do about Israel? <laughs> there's going to be a harvest, and that's the point. It's going to be a harvest, okay? There's going to be a harvest in that fourth year. But then Israel, the fig tree, 
is going to be spared because uh, this conversation says don't destroy it in the fourth year. Don't destroy the fig tree in the fourth year when the door opens. Okay. Don't destroy it. Let, let, let me fertilize it. Okay. Let me dig around it. Okay. <laughs> okay. He's going to go forth to sow. Hallelujah. In the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. He's going to go forth to sow. He's going to dig it. Hallelujah. And he's going to fertilize it. Hallelujah. The two witnesses. Okay. He's going to dig it. Hallelujah. Okay. But it's a day of darkness. He's going to fertilize it. It's a day of trouble. Okay. And you know what fertilizer smells like. Woo! You know it's going to be a stench in the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. Okay. It's going to be a stench in that day. You see, but as you can see, Jesus Christ is trying to tell us that if it bears fruit, okay, if the people listen to the two witnesses, they're going to be saved. But if not, after that, you can cut it down. Okay. That's how I'm going to get it. Hallelujah. I'm getting the end. Okay. But as we can see, this is four years since 2017, where God gave us a foreshadow of the dark and cloudy day. And we're coming up to October 1st, right around the same time as all this stuff that's happening that we see right before our eyes. Am I saying the rapture is going to happen right now? I pray it would. But I'm just... Speaking from my heart and what I see, I see the rope getting tighter and tighter. And so there's going to come a point where that rope is going to snap. And that's the whole point. And so when it snaps, this is what we're going to get into. This is what the whole teaching was about. Oh, that was the introduction. Babylon the Great is going to be utterly destroyed. Isaiah 33, let me begin here. Verse 1. Woe to you who plunder though you have not been plundered and you who deal treacherously though they have not dealt treacherously with you when you cease plundering you will be plundered when you make an end of dealing treacherously they will deal treacherously with you <laughs> do we have to have any more dna fingerprints for babylon the great than isaiah 33 verse 1 especially with all the recent events i mean we're not even going back in history. We can just go back a month. Okay, we can go back to Kabul, Afghanistan, and you saw what America did there, the treacherous dealer. The treacherous dealer that dealeth treacherously, yea, the treacherous dealer hath dealt very treacherously. So uh, we could go and start right there, and then we could go just last week with France. Okay, France feels backstabbed. France feels backstabbed so much that they had to uh, recall their ambassadors from the United States and Australia. <laughs> and so here we are. You see, the treacherous dealer is dealing treacherously and uh, the plunder is continuing to plunder. You know, the United States, Babylon the Great. You see, but the Bible says when you stop doing these things, that's when it's going to happen to you. And as you can see now, America's trying to save face. <laughs> they're trying to save face, but again, they're still up to their same old tricks. It's the mistress of witchcrafts, okay, the well-favored harlot, the one who sits as queen and says she will never see sorrow, that she'll never be a widow, that she'll be a lady forever. You see her in the uh, harbor in New York, <laughs> You know, whatever that uh, idol is, you know, that's a whole nother teaching. But there she go, Lady Liberty, you know, <laughs> there she go, saying that she going to be a lady forever. You know, that Babylon will never see any type of destruction. But the Bible says her plagues going to come in one day. Okay. And the great news is that we're going to be saved from that day, just like Psalm 91 tells us. And wherever you're else out in the world, uh, no matter where you're at on the planet, when that day of sudden destruction happens, you're going to be saved. Okay, You're going to be saved because Babylon the Great rules over all the world. As we can see right here. Now, check out this interesting detail that God has in Babylon's description. <laughs> it just I, as, as many times as I've read this, and this is one of the first things that the Holy Spirit ever, ever revealed to me. When I was a babe in Christ, way back in 2006, 
and I was drawn to prophecy. And I read the Bible like no other. Hallelujah. One of the first things God showed to me when I got to Jeremiah chapters 50 and 51 was that Jeremiah chapters 50 and 51 was talking about Babylon the Great. And so, because I said when I was reading it, you know, babe in Christ, I'm just reading the Bible, you know, devouring it. And I'm reading Jeremiah chapters 50 and 51. I say, hey, this sounds like America. <laughs> this sounds like modern day America. Okay. I didn't have no type of, you know, theology, uh, you know, indoctrination with all these uh, old uh, teachings to influence me. I was just being led by the Holy Spirit uh, through my study of his word. And he revealed that Babylon the Great is the United States of America. And now it led me to always read Revelation 17 and 18 to get more info about it. And as many times as I read it and that goes to show you and of course I already knew it but you know it's just like no matter time no matter how many times you read the word of God there's always something that you didn't see there's always something that you didn't notice you know and because it'll pop out to you at the appointed time when God wants to reveal it to you hallelujah and so here we see God describing Babylon's end and traces it to her beginning with how he describes her destruction. Now look at this. This is Revelation uh, chapter 18. Now look at, uh, let's start at verse 9. Revelation chapter 18 verse 9. The kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived luxuriously with her will weep and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning, standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come. Verse 11, now here's the key. And the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her, for no one buys their merchandise anymore. Merchandise of gold and silver, precious stones and pearls. Okay, so there you have the finance right there. Okay, so the first things mentioned are what Babylon is known for at, his, at her end. Okay, and Babylon is known as a haven for merchants in gold and silver, in precious stones and pearls. Well, that's the stock market. And then it goes to, on to list all these other things that these merchants trade with Babylon, which is, of course, uh, again, linked to the stock market because everything is centered in America, New York City, the stock market, the biggest stock markets in the whole world where all these things are traded. And then, of course, even the money, because America's dollar is uh, uh, the reserve currency for the world because of the oil deals. But even that's been changing. You know, that's been changing for years. The people, uh, America's enemies, have been wanting to get away from it. And now is the opportune time where all this can manifest. But as we can see, at the end of Babylon's reign, the first thing that God mentions is that she's known for her wealth, gold, silver, precious stones and pearls. OK. And this is exactly what America is known for right now. Money, 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 money. That's why she makes all the merchants of the earth rich because America, what does she do? OK, she just buys people. OK, she buys nations. OK, she pays people off. OK, you see, she just prints money and she gives it away, even to terrorist organizations, because she's the mistress of witchcraft. OK, she's the well-favored harlot. OK, you can see it playing out right before our very eyes. And so we see that on the day of her destruction, the first domino that's going to fall, the financial markets. OK, gold, silver, precious stones and pearls. It's the most prominent thing that's mentioned at the beginning of all these lists. And so that's going to be the first domino that falls when Babylon the Great is utterly destroyed. Will it happen simultaneously or will something like a stock market crash be like a signal? Like sometimes I think, now this is just me thinking, okay, just trying to think out the cloudy and dark day, even though, you know, it's a day, <laughs> it's a day of perplexity, okay? <laughs> and God says that to the heathen, okay? It's, it's the day of their perplexity, okay? And my goodness, it's, a, it's not a day of perplexity to me, but it's like, you know, putting all the puzzle pieces together to see how it's all going to work out. Only God knows that. 
You see? Only God knows how it's all going to play out. Okay? Because it's going to happen in an instant. But I'll be thinking, you know, along a couple different lines. And one line is that it's going to be a regular day, just like God said, in the days of Noah, in the days of Lot. Read the stories. Both were regular days until there was an intervention with God telling Noah to get on board the ark and Lot to leave the city. So that represents, of course, the rapture. Regular day up until that point. And so. And that line of thinking, I think I'm thinking that maybe it's just going to be a regular day. And then all of a sudden, you know, the rapture is just going to happen. Or on another vein of thought, I also think like, hey, maybe there would be some type of signal, maybe like a stock market collapsing, like, say, with Evergrande. And then it just ripples out to all the financial systems. And everybody and all these financial systems reporting that they're about to default, you know, it's just like a stock market crash, the worst in history. OK, and that would be like a signal. OK, and then once people start saying, hey, what do we need America for anymore? You know, and then that also be like a signal for the people who are inside America, you know, to launch an attack, you know, the sleeper cell because they, they see the stock market crashing, everything's coming down. And then also that's going to signal the people who hate America from the outside to launch all their missiles, you know, all linked to like, you know, the stock market crashing. That's what I'm thinking. And another, in another line of thought, and will we be around to see that? I don't know. So I don't know. These are like two parallel lines of thought, how I'm thinking about how am I, it might all work out, you know, but I don't know. But needless to say, Let's get back to Revelation chapter 18 because I want to show you how God shows what Babylon is known for at her end, right at the beginning. As we see, she's known for a haven of gold and silver where merchants trade and all these wares, especially this money, the stock exchange, New York Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ. Okay, right there, right in our face. But look how God, after he names all these things that Babylon the Great trades in, look how he shows her the beginning of Babylon, okay, and what she traded in. Because look at uh, the end of all the, well, let me read the whole thing so you can see it for yourself. Verse 11, and the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her, for no one buys their merchandise anymore, merchandise of gold and silver, precious stones and pearls, fine linen and purple, silk and scarlet, every kind of citron wood, every kind of object of ivory, Every kind of object of most precious wood, bronze, iron, and marble, and cinnamon and incense, fragrant oil and frankincense, wine and oil, fine flour and wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and chariots, and bodies and souls of men. Okay, and so uh, these bodies and souls of men, King James says slaves, and souls of men, well, that was how America was founded, okay? That was what she was first known for. These merchants uh, would trade uh, my ancestors. Okay. <laughs> and you talk about no quit, not to go down this avenue, but my ancestors made it over here. Okay. These souls of men that Babylon the Great traded in with merchants at her beginning. As you can see, God listed it at the end. But then at the beginning, as he starts to name everything off, he talks about what she's known for at her end. OK, but she's still known for all these things, <laughs> for trading and all these things with all these merchants. But you see how God did that. <laughs> I never saw it like that until he showed it to me today. Praise the Lord. And so. At the end where he says Babylon, the great traded in merchants with all these different kinds of uh, items, and then he ends with bodies and souls of men. Well, of course, that speaks of the African slave trade. OK, and my ancestors, they had no quit because they made it over here on ships by God's grace, packed like sardines. And because my ancestors had no quit in them, I'm here today. And because it's all by God's providence, his grace, his mercy, even in man's most uh, wicked times, God still has a purpose. And so I'm looking forward to seeing my ancestors who came to faith in Jesus Christ, even through all the oppression and the struggle. Uh, because at the end of the day, it's not about skin color. It's about being born again. Do you know Jesus Christ? <laughs> okay. It's not about skin color. God says he's no respecter of persons. Okay. There's no respect 
a person with God. He's made it all flesh. Okay, and he says all flesh is like grass. He, he, he takes no pleasure in the legs of a man. <laughs> okay, he says a horse is a vain thing for safety. You know, God is the creator of everything. Hallelujah. And so I just ponder some things and I would like to see, you know, my ancestors who first came to Jesus Christ and Lord willing, one day I will. Hallelujah. Because I'll be caught up in the cloud to go into the father's house to see all the saints of God, along with all your ancestors and all, all of our ancestors, because we're all going to be one in him. And so we're all going to be brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Children of God forever and ever in the kingdom of God. What a hope. What a glory. <laughs> What a joy divine. Amen. And so this is the first instance of this happening in Revelation chapter 18. But remember, I said there's two parts. OK, so now if we keep on reading, we see God do the same thing. What, what Babylon is known for at her end is listed at the beginning. And what she was known for at her beginning is listed at the end. And we see this down here uh, where God uh, talks about. The finality of Babylon's fall. Verse 21, Revelation chapter 18. Then a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence the great city Babylon shall be thrown down and shall not be found any more. Verse 22. This is, this is, this is uh, the part now. The sound of harpists, musicians, flutists, and trumpeters shall not be heard in you anymore okay so remember god is doing the same thing with this list too and so this is what babylon is known for at her end okay and the first thing that's mentioned is entertainment music okay harpists musicians flutists trumpeteers okay this is what babylon is known for at her end it's the most prominent thing mentioned because it's mentioned first okay and so babylon of course is known for the entertainment that she produces and spreads to the whole world okay this doesn't take rocket scientists to figure that out okay goes over the airways by the prince of the power of the air okay you got hollywood you got the biggest uh music industry labels right up the street from me in los angeles me of course you got new york the mega headquarters okay all of this stuff is propagated throughout the whole world all these sounds Harpists, musicians, flutists, and trumpeters. Okay. And then you got the Coven. Okay. You got the Den of Dragons uh, also up there in the San Fernando Valley, you know, with pornography. Okay. And then don't even let me uh, talk about uh, the witches and the warlocks in Hollywood. Okay. My goodness. You talk about harpists, musicians, flutists, and trumpeters. Okay. <laughs> they, they, they lift up a, a shout. Day after day, night after night, throughout the whole world. This is what Babylon's known for. And you've seen throughout uh, the world how, uh, especially China, back to China, <laughs> how China has rejected America's influence. And one part of their rejection of America's influence was on their youth where they banned all hip-hop acts, all hip-hop um, stuff from appearing on their communist television networks in China. Okay, this was a couple years ago. Okay, so America, America has uh, influenced the whole world with the cup of iniquity. Okay, that cup of iniquity, she has made uh, the whole world drunken with it. Okay, and so God says when she's, when she's ended, that voice, Hollywood, the record labels, done. God says the sound of harpists, musicians, flutists, and trumpeters shall not be heard in you anymore. Done. No more America. Wiped off the map. Dark and cloudy day. It's the apocalypse. <laughs> the apocalypse. You know that pale horse? He going to ride? He going to get out that gate? Now, you know that that pale horse, that you know he a bad boy. <laughs> you know that pale horse. He a bad boy. He got two names. <laughs> Death and hell follows with him. Know he a bad boy. And you know he coming out hot. <laughs> now you know when he get out that gate, he get in that fourth position, you know he gonna giddy up, 
And he gonna ride. No, he gonna ride because he got a charge <laughs> to trample one fourth of all the earth. And you know why he coming out so hot. You got hell that follows with him. It's night night, go. <laughs> night night. Okay. All them goats, they going to sleep. One fourth. Night night. You don't want to listen to God. Hey, the church, the body of Christ, those filled with the Holy Spirit, we tried to tell you. You know what the world says. You make your bed hard, you got to lay in it. <laughs> you got to lay in it. Them angels, they didn't bear you up in their hands. Okay? You dashed your foot against the stone because you wanted to be a goat. <laughs> you wanted to be a goat, and you wanted to be in the first part a night night goat, the day of sudden destruction. And that pale horse, he gonna ride. Okay. <laughs> and you better go giddy up, you pale horse, on a dark and cloudy day. Hallelujah. Because I'm gonna be singing praises to God. Hallelujah. Darkness under my feet. Hallelujah. <laughs> Darkness under my feet. That's what God said. <laughs> I didn't make this up. This is what God said. Okay. I, I'm speaking back what God said. I, I don't have any wisdom. <laughs> okay. I, I don't have any knowledge, any understanding. All I know is what God says. That's why the Bible says his sheep hear his voice and we follow him. That's why hallelujah sheep is going to be the first act. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah sheep. <laughs> hallelujah sheep is the is the introduction, okay, to the dark and cloudy day story, the seven-year tribulation. Okay. Uh, hallelujah sheep, introduction, rapture. Hallelujah, because we all believed in Jesus Christ. He saved us uh, by his amazing grace and our faith in him. And because he saved us, we are now his sheep. And the Bible says he's the sh good shepherd of the sheep. And so the first part of the dark and cloudy day story, the seven year tribulation, Jacob's trouble will be hallelujah sheep. Because when that door opens in heaven, Revelation chapter 19 tells us, Revelation chapter 19 tells us that the first thing that we say after Babylon the Great is destroyed, let me show it to you, it's hallelujah. Okay, that's why it's hallelujah sheep. What else we going to say after we escape? <laughs> hallelujah. Okay, and I'm going to say it loud and proud in my new body because I want to glorify King Jesus. I pray I can shout it as loud as I have ever spoken in my entire existence. Well, I know I will. He said, I'll be perfect. Hallelujah. Just like you will be. <laughs> I'll be perfect. Hallelujah. And I'm going to have a voice. Hallelujah. I'm going to have a voice. That's going to glorify God in the most amazing tone ever known. And so will you, because our God is perfect and we're going to be perfect just like him. Hallelujah. So we see in Revelation chapter 19, when heaven exalts over Babylon, when we see the great multitude rejoice, the first thing that we say in verse six, and I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude. Well, we know what the great multitude is. The great multitude is in Revelation chapter seven that appears in heaven out of nowhere right after the 144,000. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, and as the sound of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah! First words out of our mouth. For the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. <laughs> well, that fine white linen is the same uh, white linen that this great multitude in Revelation 7 appears in heaven with. Okay. The Bible tells us you got to go line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. Okay. The Bible tells us in uh, verse 14, and he said to him, sir, you know. So he said to me, these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. OK, we have the white robes because we washed them in the blood of the lamb. They're given to us by King Jesus on the day when we're transformed into our eternal glorified bodies. OK, because we believed in his sacrifice. Hallelujah. We believed that he is the savior of our souls. Okay, we've washed our robes in his blood. And he's washed us whiter than snow and taken our sins as far as the east is from the west. Praise his holy name forever and ever. And so the introduction, hallelujah sheep. And then <laughs> it's going to be night, night, go. 
Hallelujah. It's going to be night night goat because darkness is going to be under God's feet. And you know what the Bible says. The Bible says if you get left behind, the best of them is as a thorn or a briar. Okay, The best of them. Why? Because everybody left behind goats. <laughs> Number of goats left. Number of the goat fest. <laughs> and you got the chief one here now. You got the Baphomet. Okay, you saw his idol right here. And of course, America. Okay, you saw his idol, that Baphomet. You know, look at this stuff. I don't understand how people get all this stuff twisted. Yeah, I understand all about the Vatican and I see the serpent's face there. I see all that. And it's all linked. Okay, Rome is going to suffer destruction too. The whole world's going to shake. Okay, but Babylon the Great, a continent, is going to be utterly destroyed. Okay, it's the dark and cloudy day. It's the apocalypse. Okay, the Bible says it's going to be catastrophic. The whole world is going to move. Can you even imagine that? The whole world moving? But it's not just the whole world moving. It's also the heavens shaking. I mean, how can you stand if you don't know Jesus Christ? That's why the Bible says on the sixth seal open, no one can stand. Look at this thing. Look at this idol. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this thing. Okay, the chief goat. Okay, there he go. Now it's night night goat. Okay, on the day of sudden destruction, you get left behind. Darkness is all around you. E. T. has now come. Okay, and E. T. he ain't friendly. Okay, he ain't like the programming that you saw on the television with E. T. No, this E. T. he can't phone home because he got his butt kicked out of heaven. And this E. T. In the dark and cloudy day, night, night, goat, the chief goat, the Baphomet, that old dragon, he ain't friendly. Okay. He is not friendly. No way. You see, but people, they won't see him. So, hey, they're going to see the face of the serpent. Uh, not me, though. Hallelujah. And by the grace of Almighty God and his precious promises, I, I cling to them. Hallelujah. And so we see, back to Revelation chapter 18, and I'm done. So help me, God. Bless us in this teaching of this word. So as we saw at Babylon's end, the first thing that's mentioned is her most prominent feature, which is, of course, entertainment. The sound of harpists, musicians, flutists, and trumpeters shall not be heard in you anymore. No craftsman of any craft shall be found in you anymore. And the sound of a millstone shall not be heard in you anymore. So no craftsman, well, that's all the industry, all destroyed. The sound of a millstone, the bread basket, you know, no more food, all destroyed, all burnt up. Okay, all these things is what America used to be known for. Okay, America used to be a great producing nation. Okay, but now that great producing nation, the craftsmen, you know, that's passed on to uh, the entertainment now, which was the first thing mentioned. Okay, the sound of harpists, musicians, flutists, and trumpeters. And then after the craftsmen, what, it, what was it? The sound of the millstone. Well, that's agriculture, farming and stuff. Well, you know, this whole... Uh, uh, this whole land used to be agriculture and a big farming industry. Okay, and, and so uh, America was known as these things through her stages. But as you can see, God is recounting the steps from her end to the beginning. Okay, because after the agriculture is mentioned with the sound of the millstone not being heard anymore, then it, then God continues, the light of a lamp shall not shine in you anymore. And the voice of bridegroom and bride shall not be heard in you anymore. Well, that speaks of, of course, America's beginning. Okay, she was set up to be a light. Okay, and the church uh, thrived here in America with the Puritans. Of course, uh, it was deceitful from the beginning because we go back to the other list. It talked about the, the slaves, the souls of men, which she was also known for at her beginning. Okay, from her foundation, it's been a city of iniquity. But God still used Babylon the Great for his purposes. OK, and she used to be a golden cup in the Lord's hand, even though she was still a mistress of witchcraft from her beginning, <laughs> even though she was terrible from her youth. OK, God still used Babylon the Great to accomplish his purpose to bring about these end times, just like he still uses us despite of what we do. OK, despite of our sin nature, God still uses us. And look at all the mighty things that he's used through us to accomplish his purpose. So here we got Babylon the Great. Her history being recorded from the end to the beginning in these two sections, as you can see. And so. When it all ends, what she was what she was originally known for, for being a Christian nation. <laughs> 
what she was originally known for, for being a light to the world. Well, she's no longer known for that anymore. OK, <laughs> President, former President Barack Obama made sure to tell the whole world that he said, hey, we're no longer a Christian nation. <laughs> you know, I don't know how many times I've seen. Well, I've seen it a couple of times. I can't watch too much of it. But I saw the clip where he mocked the Bible. I mean, this guy's a clown. OK, he gonna have hell to pay. He might even be the one, too. I don't know. I don't know who the Syrian is. <laughs> I don't know who the Syrian is, but I'm doing a study on it. And so if the Lord tarries, I'm going to put it out. Uh, but if he doesn't tarry, well, hey, whoever you are, a Syrian, hey, have at it for your little seven years. OK, you little goat. But hey, I ain't going to be around to see it. OK, <laughs> I'm a sheep. I got to get sheared. Hallelujah. <laughs> I got to get sheared. Hallelujah. I got to get my sheep shearing. OK. The sheep have to be sheared, okay? You got to put new wine into new wine skins, okay? Lest the bottles burst, okay? I got to put on a new body so that I could go inside the Father's house. So I don't know what you got up your sleeve with your bag of tricks. You a Syrian. But I ain't trying to see it. So help me, God. So praise God. I pray that uh, you were blessed with this teaching. I pray that you saw this pattern right here in Revelation chapter 18. It blew my mind when I saw it today. I never saw it like that, but it's just more evidence that Babylon the Great is America. I mean, I was already settled long ago. Hallelujah, 2006, I was settled on that. Uh, but it's always good to get more confirmation and more insight and revelation when we study his word. So we shall see, saints of God, uh, what this week has in store if we are blessed to see it. And uh, if the Lord tarries, let's keep on occupying until he comes. because. Uh, no matter what, God has promised that as long as we continue to watch and pray, that day is not going to come upon us like a thief in the night. The day of the Lord only comes like a thief in the night upon those who aren't watching and praying. But that's not me and you because we have oil in our lamps. Praise the Holy Spirit. Continue to anoint us from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet, Holy Spirit, and produce the fruit of the Spirit in us so that when you come looking for fruit, on a dark and cloudy day, you're flying some 30, some 60, some with a hundredfold increase. We love you, Lord, and we praise your name forever and ever. The King of kings and Lord of lords, El Shaddai, Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus, the Messiah. Amen.